Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Indianapolis. Recently, we left the Sunshine State for Indiana to see the differences in irrigation practices. In this video, we'll show you the pros and cons of irrigating your landscapes using pond, lake, and well water. In the previous video, Josh took you to two out of three winterizing jobs he did that day. Today we'll take you to the third job and discuss what we found. In so doing, we'll be going over the benefits and drawbacks of using pond water, lake water, well water, or gray water for your irrigation system. We'll call them alternative water sources throughout this video. There is one very important thing you should do if using these sources of water that is rarely ever done and I'll go over that in a bit. First I'd like to preface this video by clarifying to some of you city folk what gray water is. Gray water is used in rural areas and is the drain water from only sinks and washing machines that is either directed through a flexible drain pipe to water trees and shrubs or to a containment system like an underground tank or cistern. Then in that case it is pumped out to water plants and trees as needed. I'll say here that using the three to four inch drain pipe methods is the only method I recommend. One benefit of using gray water is to keep septic tanks from overfilling. I do not recommend using the water in irrigation systems of any kind because of the debris that will, I repeat, will clog your sprinkler valves and sprinkler heads and drip system. In the previous video, we showed you how that second property was being irrigated using well water. This third winterizing job is using lake water, and that's okay when there's water in the lake. In this case, that's exactly what happened. The lake receded below the point of being able to draw water for this irrigation, so they had to turn the, off the irrigation system. In that case, it would be best to have a plan B set up in place so you can switch to municipal water like the system I worked on yesterday. The process of getting water from a lake or pond is the same. Let's hear from Josh how that's done. So some irrigation systems, especially in this area, are fed off by a lake or pump, um, lake or pond. And so fed by a pump, draws the water out from whatever water source into the irrigation system. Um, this is a professional irrigation pump, and to winterize them, you have to um, keep the pump and the suction line in place, blow the system out so that the check valve is still there, and then once that's done, then you take the check valve off and blow the rest of the main line out that, that end, and then take the pump in to, to fully winterize the system so that it doesn't freeze, and then you're good to go. But in this case, it's inside, so you don't have to do that. Yep, exactly. So it's already in a warmed area, so it's not going to freeze. And um, it's actually this is actually turned off right now um, at the breaker. At the breaker, yep. And that's you want to pull the master pump master valve wire out of the controller as well as turn the breaker off when you're done. Um, and that's because you said the lake is low. Uh, currently, that they turned it off because the lake's low. But when you winterize, you want to do you want to turn the breaker off and pull the master valve pump master valve wire so that there's no electricity going to the outlet or the feed, um, so that nobody gets electrocuted. Gotcha. In this case, the algae that was sucked into the irrigation system had not only accumulated inside the sprinkler valves, including the diaphragms, but had dried, which caused the valves to stick closed, which meant he couldn't finish the winterizing process on the rest of the system. Josh had to stop the winterizing process to take the sprinkler valves apart and clean them out and replace the diaphragms. This leads us to the big topic. The number one issue I have encountered on well water and gray water systems is clogged valves and sprinkler heads. This is because there was no filtration system installed in line before the sprinkler system valves. I have only seen one property with a filter on the well water system. Here are two filtration systems I've seen. One is a typical screen filter that this guy had installed after my consultation with him. He actually did double duty and put two of them in on it to be sure he didn't get contaminants in his irrigation system anymore. 
The second filtration is very clever. You don't necessarily need a backflow device as part of the setup, but here we have a filter with a three quarter inch inline sprinkler valve attached to the bottom of the filter housing. This valve is wired as the last item in sequence on the sprinkler timer, so after all the other zones run, this will run for the one minute minimum, which flushes out the filter housing. He has a garden hose attached to a pipe to hose thread adapter, but you could use drip tubing if you wish. Just don't put emitters on it to water plants because the emitters will clog from the debris. You'll need a place for at least five gallons of water to go each time. This was on a grassy slope, but you could create a rock pit such as a small French drain. A side note about alternative water sources for irrigation is that the pumps tend to be set for house use and aren't considering the needs of landscape irrigation needs. If you have standard pop-ups like these and have a reasonable number of pop-ups on each line, that is another video topic, then you should have the pump set at about 65 PSI. If you are operating rotor sprays, then it should be about 75 PSI. We'll go into the reasons why on a separate video. Most systems I see are only set at about 40 PSI, so the low water pressure is another issue I deal with on alternative water systems. I hope this sheds some light today on this topic of alternative water sources. Next time we'll probably wrap up the Indiana series for now and move on to other topics that may be helpful to you and your irrigation system or the systems of your clients if you're in this industry. Be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell to get notified of the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.